This is my Robinson R44 helicopter. I love it, but every time I fly it, I feel just a little anxiety. Thankfully, Robinson has addressed that anxiety with a new empennage kit. Saying empennage feels a little fancy, so let's just call it a symmetrical horizontal stabilizer. To install the kit, I've brought my bird to Creative Rotorcraft Maintenance in Chino, California. We'll talk about the install and see how the chopper flies with the new kit, but first, what's the point of the new symmetrical stabilizer? So this is our helicopter. It's a Robinson R44, and if you notice, this is an asymmetrical tail. So we got the boom that comes back here, and then the entire horizontal uh, tail surface kind of comes across on this side. So it's all on the pilot side. There's this issue with, uh, it's called mast bumping. And it's a phenomenon that's specific to two-bladed helicopters like ours, but it's exacerbated by this tail surface, which they eventually discovered. So basically what happens is if you're flying and then the helicopter gets really light in a low G situation, what happens is that this kind of comes up in to the wind and it pushes down on the top of this and it basically rolls the entire helicopter to the right and then because of a phenomenon called dissymmetry of lift in the rotor system the entire rotor system rotor disc is tilting to the left short story you can uh, exceed the limitations of the rotor system and really bad things happen so the new stabilizer is symmetrical it actually mounts like here and it's the same on the right and the left and so you get rid of all this asymmetry and you have a symmetrical tail surface and that keeps the uh, helicopter level if the helicopter gets into a low G situation. It's a bunch of nerdy helicopter stuff. Nonetheless, I'm super jazzed about it. Adding some detail as to why I'm so jazzed, I've owned our Robinson R44 for almost four years now and it's been amazing. It's roomy for a family of three, it's quick, it's comfortable, it's been incredibly reliable, and even though it's crazy expensive for me personally, compared to any other helicopter, it's an amazing value. But in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about the risk of a low G situation from turbulence or unexpected downdrafts. Now, the new tail design doesn't 100% eliminate the possibility of mast bumping. Any two-bladed helicopter, like a Huey or a Jet Ranger or an R44, is susceptible in low G flight but the new tail negates the R44's former right roll tendency. From the pilot's perspective, a right roll would be corrected by moving the cyclic control to the left, but in a low G state, doing so makes mast bumping even more likely. In short, symmetrical tail equals safer helicopter. That symmetrical tail design has been standard on all new Robinson R44s since early 2024, but thankfully for me, Robinson also offers a retrofit kit for existing R44s. As mentioned, for installing the kit on my ship, I've turned to Creative Rotorcraft Maintenance, or CRM. They handle the maintenance on my old Enstrom back when I still had that thing, and they take amazing care of my Robinson. There's literally no one I'd rather have handle the install. Here to walk us through the process is CRM owner, Jose Rodriguez. Hey, what's up, Mike? Well, first of all, thank you for coming in, man. I appreciate it. Uh, install process of horizontal stabilizer is actually not too, uh, terrible. It's a 25-step process per the kit. You know, we laid everything out, make sure we did an inventory check, make sure everything's on the inventory. Step number one, uh, remove the horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer. We're gonna remove this assembly here. Let's start the uh, installation of the small stubby stabilizer, level the helicopter, and then just keep going forward. Robinson actually made it super easy. Gave you a nice little kit, rigging kit, uh, set it all up. It's a nice little jig. It's a one-time use, uh, but they really did it to help us out, out in the field, make it easier on us for sure, 100%. And then you just line up all your holes. You, know, you just start doing a bunch of measurements. First doubler's done. It's nice riveted doublers in the back. Switch over to the left side. And this one's next, as you can see. This is the dirtiest part of the job here. This is called Procio, so it's a sealant that goes around the uh, doubler just to prevent any water from going in. Here's the doubler, there's that sealant. I know it looked a little bit sloppy the first time. This is why we tape it so it looks like this. You get a clean finish. Here's the stabilizer. Let's do a little unveil here. Pretty, pretty, pretty color. Horizontal stabilizer. Uh, nothing to it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, honestly, on the horizontal stabilizer. Just remove the old one, put that little stubby one back in, put the light back on, new danger stickers back on, and here's the other side of the stabilizer. We had to shave down the upper stabilizer, the lower vertical stabilizer. It was just rubbing. Just rub it back here on the rivets. So it's all 
even gap all the way across now so she looks good just got to clean her up got to vacuum the inside of the booms here there's a bunch of debris back in there finish all the paperwork which is the hardest part of the job these pieces were already painted by robinson as you requested it when you ordered the parts and then we went ahead and repainted that <coughs> all the bolts the rivets just so it looks a little bit more factory original plan was to touch these up just with a little brush but it looked real tacky after i did that even though these were already painted at the factory i just decided to sand them down and uh just do a complete paint job on them just so it looks really good here's rafael getting started on this side as you can see how could somebody screw this up biggest thing is just measuring five times before you drill you know so this is um not your first install what have you changed in your process from the first install to subsequent installs are you learning anything biggest thing is just using like a pneumatic rivet squeezer it makes things go by faster instead of squeezing them by hand yeah so just using an air squeezer on there i mean they just sped up the process by an hour or so so all right so there you have it as you can see that double on the right hand is done Overall, like I said, it's not too complicated. It's really hard to screw up on this for sure. There's a new stab, looking good. And I'm not the best mechanic, but I'm telling you, it's not complicated at all. It's not complicated for sure. I've seen you at work. Great. Thanks for getting that thing installed, man. I yeah. Anytime, man. Appreciate it. Thank How you for coming in. Screw that <laughs> Okay, you're probably wondering about the cost. Robinson introduced the empennage kit, sorry, horizontal stabilizer kit at a discounted price of $3,600 through the end of 2024. After that, it bumps up to $7,050. So I paid $3,600 plus an extra $750 to pre-paint the kit in my helicopter's volcano red metallic paint color. Installation costs $3,360 plus another $400 to paint the rivets and the hardware. Total price, including parts and labor, $8,110 plus tax. Eight grand is objectively a ton of money, but in the wild world of aviation, meaningfully improving a helicopter's flight characteristics for $8,000 is a crazy bargain. With the symmetrical tail installed, the big question is, how does it fly? Checky, checky, checky. So I've actually flown the R44 with the new tail with a guy named Chris Smith. He's one of the test pilots for Robinson. And uh, in my experience, it felt exactly like a standard R44. The distinction here is that I'm very familiar with this particular R44 because I own it and I've been flying it for a long time. So uh, let's see if there's anything different about how my R44 flies. And while the helicopter's warming up, let me quickly say a couple of words about today's sponsor, Flying Eye Sunglasses. This is very applicable for pilots. They make uh, sunglasses and eyewear out of a patented material called rosilamide that makes one millimeter thin temples possible, which means they slide very, very comfortably and easily under a headset or a helmet. If you'd like to learn more about why this is the only eyewear I'll wear in the helicopter, click the link in the description below, use the promo code MICA, and you can save 10% on flying eyes. All right, we're warmed up. Let's roll the helicopter up, get into a hover, and see if it hovers any differently than it did last time. They're right, forward, left, and above. Uh, I'm fairly light, so I'm always a little bit nose up. In fact, these days I'm flying with ballast. So uh, one of the things that I'd heard is like, ah, you know, you got the tail underneath the disc. Uh, that horizontal tail is underneath the disc, so maybe it's going to, you know, have a, a different attitude when hovering. But actually, this feels pretty familiar. Doing a little uh, pedal turn. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what you'd hope. You don't want big differences between uh, what you're used to and then how the helicopter flies now. All right, let's get moving and see if there's anything different in uh, forward flight. Chino Tower, helicopter 284 Sierra Whiskey. At the base of the tower, request right downwind departure with Lima. Four Sierra Whiskey, you can make a right downwind departure, departure to the west, right downwind departure, wind speed 406, altimeter 301, to fire base tower bridge charter. All right, right downwind departure, my members, 284 Sierra Whiskey. So in forward flight, I'm doing about 100 knots right now, and I want to say that it feels more stable, but I uh, review cars for a living, and I know it's really, really easy to delude yourself into thinking you're feeling things that you aren't necessarily feeling. Uh, but uh, yeah, off the cuff, I don't know, if I was just to hop in here, I wouldn't say like this feels radically different than uh, the, the 44 did when I dropped it off. Uh, try a couple of turns, uh, going left, <laughs> going right. 
I'm not noticing any odd movements from the helicopter or weird vibrations. But I'm gonna slow it down a little bit here and see if I notice anything, different speeds and such. Descending. Well, descending like a normal, okay. Given the change, it's really, really tempting to believe that there's something different happening dynamically here while I fly, but realistically, nah, I think it just feels like my old R44. So if the new tail doesn't fly differently for the average pilot, what's the point? Well, the traditional answer to avoid mast bumping in an R44 when flying in turbulence has been to simply slow down. That recommendation doesn't change with the new tail. Where the symmetrical tail design really behaves differently is at low G situations. The kind of stuff that uh, test pilot Chris Smith is paid to explore, but I am not. That's it. There are times when turbulence is hard to anticipate. It happens. The big difference is that now, if I inadvertently experience a big downdraft or inadvertently nose the helicopter over, that new tail will inhibit the R44's old right rolling tendency meaning I won't instinctively apply left cyclic correction that could amplify the likelihood of a mass bumping event. I think of the symmetrical stabilizer like stability control on a car. It's a safety net that keeps dicey situations from getting worse. The empennage retrofit is not mandatory for the R44, and eight grand is not a frivolous expense, but the kit does add value to the helicopter, and less importantly, I think it looks pretty cool. Statistically speaking, the biggest danger when flying is me, the pilot which is why I choose to fly very cautiously, especially in the mountains where big up and down drafts are more likely. Even so, swapping in the symmetrical tail was a no-brainer. It gives me safety margin in challenging flight conditions, and I've never regretted investing in better safety. Initial impressions are that the helicopter flies in the exact same way it did uh, before I got the symmetrical tail. I think maybe there might be some nuances that'll come about, maybe when I'm in bumpier conditions, flying in the mountains, that kind of stuff. And if I discover anything like that, I'll be sure to share. But uh, yeah, uh, first impressions, it just feels like my helicopter. For a lot of pilots, flying helicopters is about work. For me, it's about fun, and oftentimes with my family. In either case, flying is so much better when you're confident. And from that perspective, Robinson's new empennage kit is money well spent. Now that I'm feeling more confident, I'm eager to have some longer distance journeys in the R44, and we will share those with you on the channel in the not too distant future. Until then, come get your high five. Bam.